Hey there ladies and gentlemen, my name is Travis Bowman. I'm an international award-winning guitar player and today we're going to take a look at one of the best songs of the 1970s. That's right, we're talking about On and On by Stephen Bishop. Now there's a few chords in this tune that are going to be particularly challenging, especially for the left hand, but not to fear. In this video we're going to cover the way that Stephen originally played them as well as some other ways to play um, if those chords are proving to be too challenging for you. One other thing to note about this piece is the tuning. So we're going to be tuned down a half step for this tune. Um, we're going to be an E flat standard. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and zoom in on the guitar a little bit. We'll get tuned up and then we'll jump into this song. This is going to be fun. Let's go. All right, let's go ahead and get tuned up. First thing out of the gate with this tune is a very, very difficult chord. Um, Stephen Bishop really loves to use um, these left hand uh, thumb chords. Now several guitar players have employed this technique of using the thumb over the, uh, the top of the neck, particularly uh, Jimi Hendrix and Stevie Ray Vaughan and the like. So um, this is no strange thing for guitar players. However, the chord that we're going to talk about here, we're actually going to reach over and get not one, but two strings. The ring finger and the pinky are going to be on the D and G strings, respectively, on fret number five. And now we're going to have our index finger here be on the B string third fret. That's a pretty chord all in itself. Um, the, the difficult part, again, is going to be wrapping all the way around the neck and grabbing both the E and A strings with just the thumb. Now that is a fistful of a chord right there if I ever did see one. So that's chord number one. And uh, chord number two is going to be very much the same, except we're removing the thumb and adding our middle finger there on the fifth fret, right there on the big E string. So all together, these two chords are going to create the intro and eventually uh, part of the verse. It looks like this. Now don't worry, if you're trying this chord right now and you just can't make it happen, um, it's not your fault, I promise. It's, it's a very, very tough chord to do. Even for somebody like myself, I've got pretty, I've got pretty big hands, you know, and I, like I said, I've been doing the thumb chords for a while. Um, this is, is no, no beginner's chord, to say the least. Um, but don't worry, we're going to jump into a different way to play this chord. Um, so that it's more manageable for people that don't have big hands and aren't comfortable with a chord like this. So the easy, easy version of this chord, um, very much the same um, on the bottom half of your string. So D, G, and then the third fret there. Um, that can stay the same. However, the, this chord is going back and forth um, between two bass notes. And if you listen for it, you'll hear exactly what I'm talking about. It's this one, the third fret, and then, you know, an A note. So there's a C and an A. So what we can actually do here is keep these two fingers exactly where they were, and we're going to put our middle finger instead of our index finger on the B string third fret. And now we can reach our index finger to grab this note on the third fret. And instead of reaching over to grab this fifth fret here, like we did the first time, we can just kind of let our index finger lift off because this note and the open string, that's the same note. So you can get mostly the same sound, mostly the same effect of the song without having to do this, um, this big chord. But, you know, if you want to be authentic, if you want to play the tune the way it was written, 
um, then this is the way to do it. The big thumb cord and this one right here, that's the way to do it. Like I said, if you're having issues, there's other ways around it. Still get enjoyment out of the song without having to do a, a chord that might be impossible for some of you. One other thing to note before we jump into the verse is what's going on, um, depending on which version of the song you listen to, sometimes there's a little bit of like a, a finger picking sort of intro there. And it's using the same two chords that we've already discussed, and it looks like this. So once again, we're, we're still using the same theme of going back and forth between these two bass notes, the third fret there, and then the open A. So let's take the easy version of, of these two chords and let's learn this little finger picking pattern. So a lot of times you're gonna have a pinch, uh, which means that you're gonna play two notes at the same time with two different fingers, like pinching them together like that. This is not one of those cases to start out with. Um, actually, we're gonna start with the open E string down here first, immediately followed by your third fret A string. So that's what we've got so far. We've got the open E, followed immediately by my bass note. I'm just kind of following through after this A string with the D and G string. Keep in mind that this chord is still held exactly the way you see it here. So that's the first part. And now my ring finger is actually going to grab the B string, and that's when the pinch happens. Let me show you. And now we're going ahead with the verse. So this verse can actually be dissected with two parts. Um, one is what we've already discussed, these two chords down here. Okay, so that's gonna happen for a little bit. And then we're actually gonna take uh, this chord. Um, so this is the second chord that we talked about if we were doing it the Stephen Bishop way there. It's this chord, but we're gonna go ahead and move this all the way up. So right now, our middle finger's on fret number five. We wanna retain this whole shape, scoot it all the way up until we're on fret number 10 with that middle finger. So that's our third chord. And no surprise, another thumb chord down here for chord number four. Um, this is kinda of like an F, F major seven situation down here. Um, third fret D, and then second fret with my middle finger, and first fret on the B string. But we're gonna grab the third fret of the E string right there with our thumb. And again, if you're having trouble with this, you could always kind of switch your fingers around and have it to where your ring finger can grab that note and the pinky's gonna replace your ring finger on the third fret of the D string like so. So here's the Stephen Bishop way of playing this chord with the thumb. And here's another different uh, thing that you can do if you're just not comfortable getting that thumb over the top of the neck. Pretty much the same chord, it sounds exactly the same. Um, the technique is the only thing that's different. So this is what our verse is going to sound like, right up until we get to the chorus. into on and on. So there's definitely a, a pattern here. So this chord progression between this chord and this one, we're gonna call progression one. Okay, that's our chord progression number one. And uh, chord progression number two is gonna be these next two chords. So two different progressions, two different chords for each progression, right? Just a very small difference in this verse. So the first time, we're playing progression one three times.
my third time and now I'm gonna add progression two once. Now here's the second part of the verse. Once again, we're gonna do progression one, only we're doing it twice this time instead of three times. And now we're coming up here for progression two. We're gonna play that once, followed by progression one one more time. So let me go ahead and play that for you one more time, um, the verse with all of those parts, and uh, you can follow along with me. So you notice the differences there? I mean, we're playing the same chords, right? It's just the order of them is a little bit different from part one and part two of the verse. Okay, so now we're into the chorus of on and on. The very first chord of this chorus isn't going to be the D minor, but a D minor seven. So we're taking our root note, which is right here, moving it back a full step until we've got D minor seven there. So we're moving on from the D minor 7 to our next chord, which is going to look just like this. See, we're retaining these two notes on the treble strings B and E on the first fret, and we're just kind of moving our middle finger off, and now we're holding our bass note, which is this G here on the third fret. Okay, next chord is a super pretty one. It's one of my favorites, actually. So, um, heads up, here comes that thumb again. This chord has been used uh, by a lot of guitar players, uh, most notably probably John Mayer. John Mayer has used this down here in this position, and up here, um, but Stephen Bishop did it first, all the way down here in the C position here, so uh, third fret A string with my middle finger, second fret D string with my index, and now I want my ring finger to get that B string third fret, and finally Pinky's gonna be on the G string fourth fret, and our old pal Mr. Thumb here is gonna reach around and grab the third fret of the E string. Very, very pretty chord. Um, again, if this is too much for you, if you're having a hard time doing it, um, you could leave out the thumb, I suppose, and still get sort of the same chord here, or you could just go back to this chord. I've seen Steven do this as well. So after this beautiful chord, we're on an A7, but instead of just a straight A7, we're kind of doing some suspended things back and forth. Going back and forth between the third and second fret on our B string. Now we're on our D minor once again. Here's the chord that comes after that. Remember with our G note here, still keeping that partial bar down here. And this is the end of the chorus. We're right back into our verse chords. So let's go ahead and recap that chorus. So here's my D minor seven. Moving into this chord here. And here's this big jazzy C chord there. Now we're into the A7, moving it around a little bit. And there's my D minor 7 once again. B in, or G in the bass. And we're right back here. Now here's all those chords put together for this chorus. And go ahead and follow along with me if you like. Okay, so there is the verse and the chorus and the intro of On and On. Now after this, it's more of the same as far as the verse uh, and the chorus, but 
Um, later on in the song, um, once we're nearing the, the end of the verse, about to start the chorus, um, so we've got... <laughs> Now we're into that D minor. Um, at some points, particularly later in the song, and you'll you'll take note of this when we do the live performance at the end of the video. At certain points, this after this chord, this one here, or from here, this chord is going to be replaced. This A chord here will be replaced with that A7. And that's a really nice turning point to get us into the chorus right there. Let me show you what I mean. On and right into the chorus at that point. So just take note of that uh, nearing the end of the song. Okay, now we're on to the bridge of on and on. Uh, again, no surprise. Thumb chord, here we go. So basically what we have here is an F major 7. Um, it's an F bar chord, but we're leaving the first string open. Um, there's a few different ways to do this. Uh, Stephen Bishop grabs this big chord and puts the thumb over the top to grab the first fret there on the E string. And after that, we've got an E with our third fret uh, E string down here held as well. And after that, we're into the D minor 7 again. But we're walking this down. We're not hanging on this for too long. We're walking this down. Um, with the same chord that was right after our D minor seven in the uh, in the chorus, and now we're landing on this C chord again. So that's part one of the bridge. Here comes part two. It starts exactly the same as part one did with this F major seven, going into the E minor. This time it's different. Instead of the D minor 7, we're going into an A minor 7. And then that quickly jumps to this D7. And again, thumb chord here. And finally, we're going to be down here at the, at the end with that same chord that we've been doing after the D minor 7. We're going to build this one up a little bit more. And then he does that wonderful falsetto, and bam, we're right back into the verse chords. Don't forget about that A7. On and on. And then we're into the chorus. There's on and on. So all those different chord variations you can definitely use to make this song more manageable for you. And if you're really going for that authenticity, you've got all the tools now to play it exactly the way that it was written by Stephen Bishop. Speaking of Stephen Bishop, we're going to play along now with Stephen Bishop using everything that we've just learned in this lesson. So let's roll that video and jump into it. Starts to cry 
Show. 